All right, guys. So welcome back. Welcome back to a new series. We're going to um, go through the statistics part of the maths uh, BMAT section two. I really hope this is useful. and I really hope the other videos are really useful as well, guys. And collectively, all of them together would allow you to achieve the high score in the BMAT. But now, guys, we're going to move on to the first question of the uh, statistics, which is which came in BMAT 2018, question 20. It says the mean mass uh, of a uh, sweet in a bag of 20 sweets must be greater than 10 grams, but not greater than 10.5 grams. A bag is being filled with sweets. The mean mass of the first 16 sweets is exactly 9.5 grams. Four more sweets each of X grams are added to the bag to bring the mean mass of the 20 sweets into the correct range. And then it says, what is the complete range of possible values of X? So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that, and then we'll go through the solutions. Okay guys, so welcome back. So let's tackle this. So it says um, the mean of, a, of, of 20. So let's just call this M20, right? The mean of 20 must be, um, we know this must be greater than 10. So it must be greater than 10, but not greater than 10.5. So it must be less than or equal to 10.5, right? So 10.5 is the maximum possible value you can be. You can't be greater than that. Um, so the mean of the 20 then is just going to be the sum of the 20 over 20. It has to be less than or equal to 10.5, and that has to be greater than um, 10. Right. Uh, it says uh, the mass of the 16 is 9.5. Right. So we know that 16 of them is 9.5. So the remainder is just going to be the sum of the four. Right. Over 20 in total. Um, oh, sorry. We got the mean mass of the first um, 16 sweets is 9.5. So the 9.5, uh, we actually have to times that by uh, 16 to work out the weight of actually all those 16 uh, sweets, uh, plus sum of four over 20 and then less than equal to 10.5, right? And then uh, what do we know? Four more sweets, each of mass X is added. So now we have 10, we got, let's just tackle this actually, 16 times 9.5. So what you can do with that really quickly, guys, this is really, um, this is really important, guys, you pick up these tricks. So you can do 16 times 10, which is gonna be 160, and uh, 16 times 0 0.5, which is going to be 8, and minus them from one another. So if you minus this from 8, it's going to give me 152, right? So then you get uh, 152 plus the sum of 4, but all four of them are the same, and they each of mass x. Um, so that's going to be 4x, isn't it? 4x over 20, less than or equal to 10.5. Then what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to carry on on the left side, is you can carry the 20 on times basically times this side by 20 and times that side by 20. So 10 times 20, this is going to be 200. Let's get 200, uh, 152 plus 4x, less than equal to, and then um, 10.5 times 20. You, what you could do for that, guys, is just times by 2, so 21, and then put a 0 at it, so 210. Then, guys, 152 minus it from both sides. So if you minus it from the left side, you're going to get 48. Right, you get 4x less than equal to, and then in the other one, you're just going to get the 48 plus another 10, which is going to be 58. Right, and now you just have to divide both sides by 4. So x less than equal to 58 divided by 4. What's that going to be? 29, and then half that again, which is going to be 14.5, and 48 divided by 4. Uh, that's going to give you 24, 12, isn't it? That's going to give you 12. Remember, guys, when you um, over here, what, we, what we've been doing is we've, like, for example, in this step here, we just times both sides by 20. So the sign of the inequalities don't change. But remember, when you times or divide um, by a negative number, the inequality signs flip. Well, that's just an extra point um, to do with inequalities if you didn't know that. But we don't need it in this question. So the one that's going to match, then, the one that's going to be the answer here is going to be A, then. So I really hope, guys, that has made sense. Bit of a long question. Um, but I really hope, guys, that has made sense, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, welcome back. So previously, you were looking at BMAT 2018, question 20. Um, this question really talking about uh, means, which is a key topic in statistics, and also mixing this with a bit of inequalities. Remember, guys, in the BMAT maths, they really like mixing different uh, topic areas together. But without further ado, guys, we're going to move on to the next question, 2016 BMAT. This is the mean mass of a group of N people is 75. Jim, Karen, and Leroy join this group without anyone leaving. The new mass is 38. The mean mass of Jim, Karen, and Leroy uh, is 90. And it says, what's the value of N? So guys, pause the video, 
give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that, and then we can go through the solution. Okay, guys, so this is actually really similar to the previous question, just a different scenario. So th this is also common, guys, this sort of idea of um, working out, you, you're given a mean and then you have to work out a new mean, they really like asking in, in the BMAT. So you have to really make sure you're happy with what you're doing. You're really happy when I'm doing the solution. You know all the steps I'm doing. And if you don't, just comment down below, guys, and I'll be more than happy uh, to answer those questions. So we know that the mean of a group of N, so M of a group of N is 75, right? Remember, that's just going to be the sum of the N people over N is 75. Because that's what the mean is, isn't it? The sum divided by how many there are. Then now you have... Uh, th uh, three people who have joined the group, right? So then you have the sum of the N people plus the sum of the three people that have just joined, which is Jim, Karen, and Leroy, and then over, rather than N is going to be N plus three, because three people have joined now, isn't it? And that has to equal to uh, 78, so it's gone up by uh, three. And then it says the mean mass of those three people is 90, right? So the mean of those three, M3 is 90, so the sum of the 3 over 3 must be 90, and therefore the sum of the 3, so Jim, Karen, and Leroy, must be 90 times 3, which is going to be 270, right? So then what we have is um, the, sum, the sum of the uh, n people, right? So we have the sum of the n people, right, plus the sum of 3 people, which is 270, over n plus 3, which is 78. Right. So that's what we have so far. I'm going to carry on here now, guys, just for uh, space. The sum of the n people we can work out using this equation. If I just rearrange it, the sum of the n is going to be 75 n. See, now we have 75 n plus 270 over n plus 3 equals 78. Now it's just a matter of rearranging this and solving for n. So now we have 75 n plus 270 equals 78n and then 3 times 78 quick maths guys you can quickly do this 210 plus 24 which is going to be 234 yeah so that's going to be plus uh 234 210 plus yeah 234 um so you get 234 and then 78 75 to stick that on this side and bring the 234 to that side so 78 minus 75 is going to be 3n and that's going to equal 270 minus uh, 234. This is going to be 636, uh, right? And then n divided both sides by 3 is going to be 12. Right, remember, guys, n is, has to be a... If you if you don't get a full number, that means you've done something wrong because you can't have a decimal number of people because remember, it's n pieces. That must mean in the original group, there was 12 people. So therefore, guys, b here is going to be your winner. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And as always, really look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys. So previously, we were looking at this question, working out means, modified means, using means to work out things, basically. Remember, guys, this is really common. And a similar concept was actually in the previous question. So hopefully, guys, that question hasn't caused too many problems. Now, guys, we're going to move on to the next question. And BMAT 2015. So it says, a class of N people take a spelling test. Their mean score uh, for the test is M. And other people take the test and scores N. Uh, it says, when this people's result is included with the other results, it is found that the mean has decreased by 2. It says, what equation below shows the correct expression for n in terms of m? So, guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that, and then we can go through the solution. Okay, guys, so hopefully you're spotting the trend. This is actually another question of that type. So, here we know a class of m take a test. The mean score is m, right? So, we can basically say, right, so the... Rather than write m, I'm, I'm going to actually write mean because m is actually one of the variables in this question. So the mean of the n people is m, right? Another people takes the test and scores n, right? And says when this people's result is included, so the mean of the n people plus the extra person, right? When this people is included with the results of the others, it's found that the mean has decreased by 2. Uh, so it's going to be m minus 2, right? So the mean of the n people here is going to be the sum of the n people, right, over n, and that has to be m. Therefore, that's, remember, remember guys, three dots just means therefore, the sum of n must be m n if you just rearrange that. So now we have the sum of n, and we need to work out the which equation below shows the correct expression for n um, in terms of m. Okay, cool. So now from here, 
we need to work out the sum of the n plus the extra person who's just been added over n plus 1, and that is, we know, n minus 2, right? So the sum of the n plus 1 is just going to be the sum of the n plus, the, plus whatever the extra guy got. So the sum of the n is just mn plus what the extra guy got. So when these people, uh, it says, uh, another people takes the test and scores n. So whatever he got, so plus the n over the n plus 1 equals m minus 2. Right, and then it says which below gives an uh, expression for n in terms of m. Right, so this is an equation which is in terms of n and m. So now we just need to rearrange for n more or less. So what I'm going to do is bring the n plus one to the other side. So then we get um, m n plus n equals m minus two n plus one. Right, so we have that so far. Um, and then what we can do uh, over here, guys. Uh, would be to expand the right hand side. So you're going to get m n, you're going to get plus m minus 2 n minus 2, and then this cancels out with that. Therefore, you're just left with n equals m minus 2 n minus 2. Bring the uh, minus 10 to the other side, so you get 3 n equals m minus 2, and n equals m minus 2 over 3. So m minus 2 over 3, that's going to correlate then to d, which is going to be our winner here. d is going to be the correct answer. So hopefully, guys, all of this is really making sense. The past three questions is really making sense. And as always, really look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we were looking at BMAT 2015, uh, question 20. Again, similar theme. You're given a mean, you're given another mean, and then you're asked to basically do something with that. But hopefully, guys, these are really making sense. Um, let's go on to the next one, guys. We're at 2014. It says three classes in a school all take the same test. Class one achieved a mean score of 61. Class two, 63. And class three, a mean score of 70. It says the mean score of the students for all three classes combined was 65. Class one contains twice as many students um, as class two. It says which of the following uh, statements about the number of students in class three is true? So, guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute, and then we can go through the solution. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So again, guys, similar question. You're given means, ask, basically ask something to do with that. But here, unlike the other ones, you're basically given three different groups of people. So to make things less confusing, we're actually going to draw a table, right? So I'm going to write N here, which is basically the number of uh, students in that class, the mean, and the class, right? And we have three classes, one, two, and three. And this is class one. Uh, has a mean of 61. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. That was the previous question. So class one has a mean of 61. Uh, class two has a mean of 63. And class three has a mean of 70. Right? Uh, and it says the mean score of the students for all is, is, is 65. I just call this MT is uh, 65. Right? And this class one uh, contains twice as many students as class two. So if I say... Um, class two has X number of students, class one must have two X number of students, more or less. Okay, now um, we need to work out basically, basically how much people are in class three, right? Not the exact number, but like compared to the others. So we can work out, we can work out the sum of class one by just doing 61 times two X, which is going to be 122 X, right? Again, sum of class 2 is going to be um, 63 times the x, that's going to be 63x. And if I call now the number of people in class 3y, which is another unknown, which we basically have to work out what y is, right? Um, the sum of class 3 then is going to be 70, 70y, right? So the mean total is just going to be the sum of the total over the total number of people, basically over uh, over total n, I'm going to call it total n and this has to be 65 so the total t is going to be 122 x plus 63 which is going to be 185 x yeah 185 x plus the 70 y over the total n which is going to be 3 x plus y and this should be 65 right now just basically rearranging that for x uh, for y so you're going to get 185 x plus 70 y equals 65 times 3 is going to be um, 180 plus 15, which is going to be 195. So 195x, right, plus 
uh, we need to do it for the y as well, plus uh, 65y. Right, and then just a matter of rearranging this, so stick the 85 to that side and the 65 to this side, we're going to get then 5y equals uh, 10x. So 5y equals 10x, and therefore y equals 2x. So this y is 2x. Therefore, that tells us the number of students in class 3 is actually the same um, as class 1. So class 3 contains the same number of students as class 1. So D, here is our winner. Okay, so hopefully, guys, that has made sense. Remember, as with the previous question, you're just dealing with, um, you know, you have a mean, just understanding the idea that the mean is the sum divided by the total, and really just working with that, guys, to work, don't, rather than thinking about what to do, just start doing what's obvious, and then you'll immediately see that you're going in the right direction. Because remember, guys, one minute recursion is quite tough and really don't have time to be thinking like that. So hopefully, guys, that's made sense. And as always, look forward to seeing you in the next question. All right, guys, welcome back. So previously, you're looking at BMAT 2014, question 16. Similar idea, guys, as before. Means, working with means, using that to find uh, variables and stuff like that. But now, guys, we're going to move on um, actually to the last question in the statistics topic, which is BMAT 2010, question 12. It says the mean time for running a race by a group of 20 people is 54 seconds. The times for a second group of people were added and the value of the mean went up to 56, which formula represents the relationship between the number of people in the second group P and the mean time of the second group T. So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that, and then we will be going through the solution. So guys, so here, similar, again, all the statistics questions actually guys have been with this topic to do with means and working with means. So you know the mean uh, for a group of 20, right? So I'm just going to call that M20. So the mean for the 20 is 54, right? The times for a second group were added, right? And the value of the mean went up to 56. Uh, so we know that then the mean for of the 20 plus the second group of people. So how many people are in the second group? A uh, number of people in the second group is P. So plus P, uh, that's going to be uh, 56. Right. And remember, mean of the 20, just the sum of the 20 over the 20 equals 54. Therefore, from this, the sum of the 20 must be 54 times 20, which is going to be 1080. So 54 times 2 is 108. Stick a zero on it. Uh, 1080. Right. And then the next one, uh, the sum of the 20 plus the P over 20 plus P equals 56. Right. Therefore, from this, guys, uh, the sum of the 20 plus the P equals uh, 56, 20 plus P, okay? And then it says, uh, and the uh, and then it says, uh, and the mean of the second group is T. So, you know, the mean of the second group is T. Um, and since the mean of the second group we know um, is T, we know then, the second group has how many people? P, right? So the sum of those P, P, P people over P equals T. Therefore, the sum of P equals PT. Okay? So the sum of the 20 and the P is just going to be the sum of the 20 plus the sum of the P. I can split that up, and that should be 56, 20 plus P. And the sum of the 20, we work that out somewhere, which is 1080 plus the sum of P, which is PT, this equals um, 56, 20 plus P. And as we look at all the answers, we just have to rearrange this and put P there as a subject. So 1080 plus PT equals 56 times the 20 uh, is going to um, 56 times the 20. Yes, that's going to be uh, 112 and stick a zero on that, right? So 1120 um, plus 56p, right? And then what we can do here, guys, is stick that on that side and stick this on this side. So you get pt minus 56p equals 1120 minus 1080. 20, that's going to be 20, that's going to be 40, isn't it? So 40. And then stick a p out from here. So you get t minus 56 equals 40. Therefore, P equals 40 over T minus 56. And therefore, guys, this gives us a grand answer then of C.
So as always, guys, I really hope that has made sense. Really similar to the previous questions. The only difficult thing about these questions, guys, actually is just, you know, arithmetic, processing the numbers and being quick with that. But as you do more questions, guys, you'll easily get better at that. But hopefully, guys, that has made sense. Hopefully the other questions in this statistics series have made sense. And we look, really look forward to seeing in the next series, which is going to be a probability, a really big topic, guys, for BMAT Section 2 uh, math. So make sure you're tuned in for that. But other than that, guys, take care of yourself and see you back next time.